Thank you so much. Appreciate it. This is the future, people. Okay, now. Yeah, this is the future, people. <laughs> Where the devil are my eyes? Okay, good thing. Um, so let me go and do share and then on the tab and then boom. Can everybody see this? Yes. Looks boom. great. Nice share. Yes. Okay. So hello everybody in the virtual space. I am so pleased we get to used to meet in the uh, you know physical space, but no longer. Um, so I'm going to chat about web three communities. This is essentially something that I have been working on for um, over two years. Um, everything that I've kind of done in the ecosystem has been centered around communities and how we can empower those communities to um, do more, to be more, to get, get more value um, out of what they're doing um, and also empower the individuals that make up those communities to, again, get more value, get more things done um, and, and really get more value out of life that they, than they do with the uh, current models. So. The evolution of the term of community has really come a very long way. If you look at the um, initial kind of definitions, they were all very much centered around the physical space. Um, and, you know, it's, you were in a particular location, and therefore you belong to X community. As we've seen um, the through the internet and everything that we've been doing, um, to digitize a lot of the stuff that we use to communicate, to engage, to get shit done, it's evolved from this very physical space to a very digital um, space and uh, definition. And so the, the evolution really here is from what I like to um, say, it's from one dimensional to three dimensional or from a very flat um, kind of existence to a 360 degree one. Um, we had community 1.0, again, very much physical, uh, community 2.0, um, which evolved and, and became this body of people that viewed things collectively um, or, or shared the same values. Uh, regardless of that physical location. And I think right now we're at community 3.0. This idea that we are 360 degree humans and we don't just necessarily belong to one group, but belong to many. Um, as we all know, um, we are part of so many, you know, telegram groups right now that it's really, we're very, very community, you know, focused. But the idea is how do you, build those very, very strong connections without the interactions and the um, values that that initial physical space provided you. And this is incredibly, incredibly relevant for the situation that has literally escalated incredibly quickly um, from we were all in Paris together um, saying, hey, you know, or London or Denver, to this situation where we're now scrambling, there's so many events being canceled, there's so many, um, you know, opportunities for us to build community that have just completely gone away, at least for the next couple of months. And it's for, for the Ethereum community in particular, where it's so centered around these events and so centered around our face-to-face -face communication. It's how do you retain this human element when we are, you know, now pushed to potentially communicating in a lot of text only, which we were kind of doing, but, you know, it's nice to have the face-to-face and trying to plug in a lot of different disparate systems and technologies that are clearly challenged right now. We see, I mean, the guys um, doing, doing Intercom have pulled a, an amazing feat of just duct taping resilience and no sleep to be able to provide this, but there were so many glitches and so many things that need to be ironed out to enable, um, you know, a smooth experience in this kind of virtual status quo that we find ourselves in. And so this kind of takes me to um, 
this quote by Berners Lee that I like use in so many of, of my talks because I really do believe it is, you know, worth remembering that it is something about all of us. Um, and, and it's something that we kind of tap into, um, not just the blockchain space and not just the Ethereum space, but really this whole digital realm that it is for everybody. And, and right now we are even more so pushed to create this powerful change that is for for the good of everyone and i think what we're seeing with all of these cancellations and not just of ethereum events but you know tech events and events throughout the world we're at the same time seeing a lot of people who or, or considering a lot of people who can't afford to attend those events or for whom the ticket prices are just ridiculous from the get-go. And simply for the people who don't want to be traveling miles and miles and miles to be able to interact with their peers or gain value and, and, and join valuable conversations with their peers. And so I think, again, more than at any time before, yes, it's a time of let's say crisis we're being forced into all sorts of different situations but maybe it's a time for opportunity as well um and right now and and this again is a conversation that we've had in the blockchain space for quite a while it's how do we as remote first digital nomadic peoples from all over the world how do we get that connection and how do we you know not fall into this like um, cycle of loneliness and isolation and not being able to actually um, feel those human connections that are very important to us as humans and for us as societies. Um, and so moving into the space, and again, because we are more forced more and more to work remotely, how do you retain authenticity? How do you retain connection? How do you um, you know, connect, genuinely connect with people across geographies and have this sense of belonging. Like we know that the Ethereum community, first and foremost, is incredibly, incredibly powerful at this very thing, that sense of connection uh, and that sense of belonging. And how do we retain that um, in, in a slightly colder, let's say, virtual space? Um, and so those are, these are, um, incredibly important considerations. So what I'd like to see as well is, you know, again, this is a slide that we use a lot in explaining decentralization, but actually what we're seeing, even with Intercon, it's yesterday or, you know, at ETH Denver, ETH London, ETH CC, just to name a few of the recent kind of, uh, events where we'll all, we've, a lot of us have been together. It was this whole thing of all of us migrating to a one space. And right now what we are doing is we're plugging all of these different moving parts, um, a lot more volatile, of course, but you know, it, it's the first attempt and, and a lot of these tools haven't been stress tested at all, um, particularly for large groups. Um, but I think maybe this is, potentially the true expression of what that decentralization means. We are all in our own homes, in our own time zones, trying to communicate with each other and, and still share our ideas and still enter in conversations in a much more decentralized way, which is actually, you know, don't just talk the talk, walk the walk, or rather um, do the intercon. Um, some best practices that I, and again, just even moving forward in these dynamics, um, and these are to, to be remembered when you are building communities, is that you must always, always have this purpose. You must always have this overarching purpose that is for us, of course, um, for the Ethereum community, it is about these creating this Web3 world where, you know, opportunity and choice are available, where there are none and so on. This is incredibly, incredibly powerful and it moves a lot of people and it moves a lot of 
um, you know, it moves people to action. So I think you always have to have that. But also, number four, very, very relevant in this situation right here, right now, is what are the tools and the strategies that support those communities? Right now, we're a little bit at a loss because this has taken us by surprise. This has taken us as, you know, a little bit, um, it came out of left field. Um, and how do we adapt? How do we move from the status quo that was very much focused around, hey, let's organize on Telegram, but I'll see you next week anyway at this event or next month, uh, and then we can continue the conversation. What now? What is there? What more is there? And how do we use those to maintain the strength of our Web3 community and even empower new people to join us in this very, very um let's say interesting um setup and interesting framework so potentially working a lot on the smooth kind of uh, onboarding let alone onboarding onto blockchain but onboarding onto our whole event system or or idea sharing systems will also be a very interesting thing for for us to discover together but one of the other things, and this is a, a very, very important piece that I think leads very nicely into and from those principles and into specifically what we're doing right now. Because right now, this intercon and everything that we'll be doing in the next few weeks will be all about innovating through the community and within the community. This, what we're doing right now, is specifically that at the top of the pyramid. And this is because we are in the situation where individuals are isolated, communities can no longer um, coordinate as they were, and it's how do you solve for that? And it's bringing that innovation that will ensure we can continue building the strong uh, Web3 community and we can plug in those tools that enable that human element to still permeate everything that we do because it is important to have that authenticity to have that dialogue to have that sharing of ideas happening regardless of uh the the uh, i guess global um dynamics and that's how i think we are going to to um make the best of the situation and maybe even learn things that we were just too complacent and doing the same things year in year out to actually think about and and discover so empowering people, delivering value, I think this is incredibly important. And again, with Intercon, we are seeing this, just groups of people or self-organizing, organizing, trying their absolute best. And again, I cannot thank these guys enough for pulling this together. It's been crazy. Like every time that I was sleeping, they were not. And I would wake up to 250 messages on in the ops channel in Telegram and just scrolling, I would get a play by play of how intense the whole planning situation is. But it is about empowering and it is about delivering value. And we must all now get to thinking at what are those tools and what are those um, avenues and those channels and those groups that we maybe create to make sure that we continue to deliver value, to make sure that we continue onboarding people. Because again, these are things that are very, very important for adoption because we are in the house of adoption. I'm all about adoption. How the hell do we get it done now that we are you know, potentially faced with yet another little hurdle to jump um, through now that, you know, I was just chatting to the guys at the Ethereum meetups in London and they have canceled them for the foreseeable future. What do we do in this situation? Do we host virtual meetups? Potentially. Um, and this is something that we, we are learning from now. Do we look to, um, you know, the, the events that are coming, and I'll mention a couple, um, how do we insert that ability to still co communicate and coordinate at a human to human level in this current dynamic? And I think it's an interesting challenge. Because, and this is something that Albert um, Need from the Ethereum Foundation had in his um, keynote at East London, which really struck me. And I think we need to remember this every so often when we get, you know, a little bit gloomy. Um, it's 
this is a very, very important time. It's the first time that so many things are simultaneously accessible and being worked on in this practical context. And I think this is what gives us hope and this is what gives us those avenues and that space to create the solutions where there are there currently are not right because maybe this whole situation is pushing us much quicker towards figuring out how the decentralized world actually works um so you know let's take um let's take some hope from this because it is a very very fruitful time right now um, so putting the human in virtual, obviously sharing and transacting value. I think this is, this is an important one. The 360 degree human interactions. I think this is where it needs work. Um, because again, we are right now just very, very screen, um, uh, screen heavy, but also I think it's very hard to organize calls and have people jumping onto a link all at the same time because of those time zone considerations because of so many different things and i think we really must um consider what those conversations and what those interactions look like and of course continuing to enable learning i think by no means just not being able to do physical workshops uh, or talks at events does absolutely not mean that we should stop enabling learning for for people or continuing to draw those those avenues into ethereum for people all over the world maybe now we will actually do it much better uh, and in a much more accessible way so because i mentioned these events um that are happening and i'm super super excited to um, not only be part of them personally but but to really kind of try to figure out that human element whilst being involved in them because that, those communications need to happen and i think you know with the bsic incubator that's already started dragon quest happening uh in april and then funding the future the gitcoin hackathon happening starting next week these are prime opportunities for us to try to do a lot of the things that we normally do in person in a virtual way so one of the things that i'm personally doing um and and this was a conversation that i was having with vivek at gitcoin yesterday was let's set up um you know a a gitcoin community uh, over on people and then handle a lot of the conversations between hackers and mentors between um you know um teams themselves in this visual way in this video way and see what happens um we may be successful we may not be successful um some of the things that may work some others won't but another thing that i'm thinking about is you know mentorship in um hackathons tends to be a very very fuzzy concept sometimes when you need help the most you cannot find your mentor you don't know where to find them they may not be available right at that moment what if instead of a specific mentor or a group of mentors what if we put the question out to the whole community so that whomever can help you can actually jump in and help you because they have noted that particular question or that particular area you need help in so again a very very interesting challenge that i think we will learn a lot from and i'm super excited to to be part of all of these great events and seeing how we can you know, um, uh, I guess, move from that very physical um, interaction to a virtual one without losing the the value. Um, and so this is, um, these are some of the DEF CON scholars from last year. And I think, again, what does it look like when a room like this would actually be a room in a virtual space, right? What does it look like for to be able to provide value, the same amount of value for people in a decentralized remote way? Um, so we better get to thinking just in case, you know, these things do not progress um as as swiftly as we want them to with this whole um pause on travel um and figure out a solution to to get the same effect and again coming back to old tim because he he did put out some some really great quotes out there um when some you know we are in such a creative space and this conference is 
a complete and utter example of this. What can we imagine? If we all put our heads together, I'm very, very certain that we can not only um, create alternatives for what was, but actually create something even better. Um, and, and the more we try them, the more we do them, the more, you know, we figure out what works and what doesn't, and the stronger we will be at the end of it, and potentially even the, the greater the adoption. Who knows? Maybe this was, you know, the, the crux to us, um, solving adoption. Maybe it was just to go digital and stop having, um, events in, in, all these different locations. Who knows? Um, but I'm excited to find out. Um, and I think we are a very strong community and we will only um, get stronger as a result of this if we all work together. Um, and yes, that is about it. Uh, thank you so much, Simona. That is such a great talk. You are such a great speaker. Um, we have a few minutes left. If anybody has any questions for Simona, feel free to drop them into the chat. I will go ahead and start with a question yeah. of my own since uh, I haven't seen any yet. Um, what features would you like to see to improve this virtual experience being that Intercon is the first wave? Um, I think I think very much around this, like, for instance, look at us here as we we um, attend these conferences, we mostly and a lot of calls, we mostly have our cameras off. Um, and <laughs> um, but it's it's because we may have connectivity issues, right? That's a genuine thing. And I've switched my camera off several times because, oh, there's poor connection. There's like this, that and the other. But I think how do we continue to have that face-to-face -face interaction that isn't sometimes tied to a particular talk or tied to a particular subject? Let's remember most of the conferences, like I'll be honest, when I go to events, most of the things, the talks, I do not see because I am constantly speaking to people in hallways, at the entrance, outside, at lunch, all of that. And those are, for, for most of us, those are the connections that are super, super valuable because we start chatting and we figure out, oh, we should collaborate. Let's do this. Let's do that. Let's work on this. How do you recreate that? How do you recreate that genuine networking and very, very natural flow of networking or of connecting with people or of having a dialogue with somebody in this virtual space? And I think that for me, that face-to-face -face time is very, very important. And I think that for me is a key element to, to nail. Yeah, I definitely agree. And I think the V1 of that is the Mozilla Hubs because it has the directional speaking. We were trying to simulate that. So I don't know who, how many people are in the Mozilla Hubs or if that's going well, but it was definitely the, the intention to give it a shot and see how it works. So a couple people there. Yeah, it seems like people just spread, spread out over all the rooms um, to get in where they could. But yeah, I agree. It's all those little uh, micro conversations and actually like the energy and the cues from like being able to make eye contact or see that you're wearing an amazing hat is something that makes a big difference. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like, I um, the street and I was like, oh, I'll just keep it on. It'll be fine. <laughs> that's a, that's a pepper hat for sure. <laughs> um, anyone else, uh, have any feedback thoughts, um, on Simona's talk? or community in general. We've got another five minutes before the next speaker comes on. We have a hand up. There was a hand up, I saw it. It was oh, Josh. Raise your head, Joshua Fairhead, please go ahead. Your audio is not working. Oh dear. <laughs> no, oh, no you're there we go, that sounds better. Yes. Okay, it's probably a very poor connection, <laughs> hence the camera. Um, the question is, how do we move from decentralized to distributed, i.e. from a somewhat uh, linear way of communicating to a more non-linear way of communicating? 
It's a tough question. Oh my God. <laughs> but, yes, it is. Course. And this is my beret hat, <laughs> which doubles up as like a thinking cap, but you know. Um, so I think those are things that we will need to figure out together um, by doing all of these experiments. Because if we jump from the super, super centralized, you know, modus operandi that we were in before straight to distributed, we're like, I don't even know. Uh, it's going to be such vertigo and such like uh, motion sickness that most people will not be able to stomach it. I think you have to do it in stages and let's figure out what makes sense for right now and how we create something that does work for um, for most of the use cases and then once that's kind of there, let's figure out how we, we do distribute it. I think it's it's a shock to the system for a lot of people. Let's remember people, humans, do not like change. And it's one of my favorite things to go and speak to audiences who are, you know, know nothing about blockchain and to try to give them this alternative image of what, you know, things could be like. And people just go, Meh, but why? Uh, everything is fine the way it is. Why the hell do we need to mess with it? It's unnecessary, blah, 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 blah. So as a first reaction, it's always, but why should we change? Now we're being forced to change, you see. And that's a very need is a great teacher. It pushes you to try shit that you will never have, you know, put up with normally. And this is great. So um, I think you know, let's let's see what happens. Again, we I'm sure we will create some pretty cool stuff because of need. Absolutely, couldn't agree more. Thank you, Simona. Really appreciate your talk and your energy as always. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Simona. Uh, this is